Look to the right. See that computer? Look to the left. See those plastic blinds? Mr. Allen, look in your wallet. See those credit cards? Now everyone, look in your pockets. See your cell phone? All of these wouldn't have been possible if it weren't for their inventors. Here are the nominees for the 2012 History Hall of Fame Inventors category. In 1950, Diners Club made history by pioneering the world's first universal charge card. And the first Diners Club card ever was card number 1000. And the card holder was an entrepreneur named Frank McNamara. It was only appropriate. It was McNamara who had a simple idea. One charge card, many restaurants, one bill. No one had ever thought of that. McNamara, with the first credit card, revolutionized consumerism. Just imagine how the world would be today without credit cards. Meet Amos Joel, mobile phone pioneer, father of modern telephone switching, one of the original phone freaks, and a tech icon. Joel invented the mobile communication system, which allowed for phone service to be transferred between frequency cells. It was the prerequisite for uninterrupted mobile phone service. With more than 70 patents to his credit, Amos's place in history goes well beyond cell phone technology and includes the Bell System's automatic message accounting system. Before AMA, long distance calls were completed by operators. They asked the caller the number they were calling from, the number they were calling to, and recorded the information before making the connection. So Amos developed AMA, a system that used electronic switching methods to automatically identify the originating number. The system recorded the information on punched paper tape. A computer then used that record to generate an accurate long-distance bill. Amos's AMA patent also holds the honor of being the largest patent ever, weighing in at an incredible 11 pounds. Amos Joel's third pivotal invention came in 1969. The Traffic Service Position System, or TSPS. Now, operators no longer needed to be geographically close to the customer. A person only needed to dial zero, and they would be routed to a centralized call center from anywhere in the country. I've studied the human heart for a lifetime, and there's something you should know. Dr. Robert Jarvik, inventor of the artificial heart. We've all seen Dr. Robert Jarvik, but many people don't know who he is. After his father was diagnosed with a heart condition, Dr. Jarvik shifted his studies to focus on the heart. He pioneered the effort to invent an artificial heart for animals and was later able to adapt it for humans. He called it the Jarvik 7 and performed the first surgery in 1982 for Barney Clark. I know it's been a pleasure to be able to help people. I mean, you folks learn something. He never left the hospital, but was able to sit up, talk to his wife, and hug his kids. Clark made it 112 days. He died of multiple organ failure and his body shut down, but the Jarvik 7 was still beating. His efforts led to more advancements in artificial organs and has saved millions of lives. Plastic makes the world go round. John Paul Hogan invented high-density polyethylene plastic, or HDPE, at Phillips Petroleum Company in Oklahoma City. One might be surprised how his invention has revolutionized the world. HDP is marked with a 2. HDPE is short for High Density Polyethylene. Container and Packaging Supply has a huge line of HDPE products. HDPE is used in a lot of different products. Your Breakfast of Champions comes in a cereal box with an HDPE liner. You push your groceries around in an HDPE shopping cart. A lot of the items on the shelves come in HDPE. You may bring your groceries home in an HDPE grocery bag. Recycled HDPE is used to make pipe, buckets, hint hint, flower pots, plastic lumber for your deck, and recycling bins. Cool, huh? Carl Kordesh invented the fuel cell and utilized it in many ways. He installed it in his Austin A40 car, which paved the way for hybrid electric automobiles. He also invented the alkaline battery, which had a longer life and better performance than larger batteries at the time. His 120 patents emphasize his many contributions to the field of portable power. You will see the most powerful explosion ever witnessed by human eyes. 
Uh, the blast will come out of the horizon just about there. And this is the significance of the moment. This is the first full-scale test of a hydrogen device. Without Edward Teller, father of the hydrogen bomb, the Cold War would have been much different. At Lawrence Livermore Lab, Teller used his physics and mathematics skills to work on the Manhattan Project and create the H-bomb. I had an opportunity to propose the hydrogen bomb, the design that we had at that time. We had a thorough and long discussion. It was obviously of general interest with the head of the Chicago group, Ms. Compton. He reported on what we were doing and what he has said that is in the record. There are novel possibilities. Even when we have the nuclear explosive, it will not be a simple matter. A major theoretical effort and a major practical effort will be needed. Edward Teller's H-bomb has led him to win many prestigious awards. What do you call this machine, Joe? It's called a Unimate. It's an industrial robot. It does the work of a man in the hot, the hazardous, the tedious jobs like die casting, forging, paint spraying, anything repetitive. It's about 65 of them out right now and we're making 20 a month. The Unimate was only one of DeVol and Engelberger's many inventions. The fathers of robotics adapted Unimate to work in assembly lines to build cars and other things. It was a major innovation for the auto industry. Separately, DeVol invented smaller robots to aid in housework, while Engelberg created robots to aid in hospitals. First applications were to spot weld the pieces of metal together that make up a car body. Right. And maybe on a production line, there may be three or four different kinds of car bodies going down there. Yes. When the line stops in front of the robot, the robot has a welding gun in its hand, and it goes as programmed to put two pieces of metal together here, two pieces of metal together here, sends the car forward. Without Parker, these TV antennas wouldn't exist. During World War II, he designed portable radio transmitters for the military, and then later adapted that technology to broadcast TV signals. The signals are broadcast as radio impulses into space. Called the Intracarrier Sound System, it led to the availability of TV in the average household. In the 1960s, NASA even selected his company to provide selected instruments for use in the Apollo flights. Steve Jobs is synonymous with his inventions of the next computer, Mac, and all things I. As a child, he learned electronics and founded Apple in 1976 with Steve Wozniak and Ronald Wayne. It created the first Macintosh computer seen here in 1984 and amazed people with its advanced capabilities. Hello, I'm Macintosh. It sure is great to get out of that bag. He later followed up with several Mac computers, all with improvements. His iMac. The iMac was the first successful personal computer to use a mouse and a graphical user interface. Its success allowed for jobs to expand into music, giving birth to the iPod. We love music and it's always good to do something you love. Product is called iPod. iMac, iBook, iPod. Now this is a quantum leap because it's your, for most people, it's their entire music library. This is huge. As Jobs stated, this quantum leap re-energized the music industry and has led to the invention of the iPhone. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. The 2012 inventors inductees are John Mockley and Jay Presper Eckert. Mockley and a brilliant graduate student in electrical engineering, Presper Eckert, set to work constructing ENIAC, the Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer. Essentially the first digital computer, the ENIAC was a giant calculator used by the Army to project the trajectory of artillery shells. Eckert was a brilliant man who had dreams of going to MIT, and Mockley researched weather. 
At Pennsylvania's Moore School of Electrical Engineering, they set to work on EDVAC, a prototype of ENIAC. In 1946, they developed ENIAC, which some at the time called the Great Brain. It had to be laboriously rewired each time it was programmed and couldn't make logical decisions based on its calculations. But ENIAC had proven that computers could be constructed. After ENIAC, Ecker and Mockley wondered how they could advance their invention further. They decided to start the electronic control company. But realizing the computer might find itself useful in the business world, Eckert and Mockley formed their own computer company. They set to work on a machine they called the Universal Automatic Computer, UNIVAC. The UNIVAC, unlike previous one-of-a-kind machines built to solve scientific or military problems, could be programmed to serve many purposes. The UNIVAC had several models and was used in 1952 to track a presidential election. It continues to live on in popular culture as Karen from the TV show SpongeBob SquarePants is a Mark II UNIVAC computer. The ENIAC and UNIVAC have revolutionized technology, and Eckert and Mockley started the era of the computer. Thanks to their groundbreaking inventions, we now live in an electronic age. For this reason, they are the inventor inducted into the 2012 History Hall of Fame.